All right, Lex's School of Stairs. Um, right here, I've got, uh, we're in parallel mode. You've got parallel and perspective. Um, perspective is, you know, real life 3D looking. Parallel is more computer based and I find it easier when you're drawing in two dimensional to just stay in uh, parallel. Um, for Apple, I use Command-1. It's probably Alt-1 or Control-1 or something. Um, and that gets you in different uh, views. Um, right here, I'm actually not sure where the actual menu is for it, but there's, you know, top, bottom, left, and right, basically, or and stuff like that. You know, it just moves around in different views. So, that's where I start. Uh... I just threw some random dimensions up here. We've got 123 and 5 eighths and uh, 211 and a half. Uh, I drew out a profile view of a unit tread. This is just you assuming we use like a concrete uh, tread, uh, 12 inches by three and a half. And even while we're here, we can do a, uh, a little weld tab beneath it, a little nine inch uh, piece of angle iron, two by two. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. There. I don't know why it always shows up gray, that's annoying. But now, if we do that, bam, that is what the, the these are, the bottom section is the tab uh, bracket that we weld on and that's our tread. So that's how we get our toe line and all that stuff. So um, it's not as simple as drawing a line from here to here. That's not what our toe line is going to look like. There's a few things we have to do. Um, I do it probably in an unorthodox way, but I actually draw lines there and there uh, my symbol, uh, for my rise and run. And I use a divide tool. So I right click and go to divide. And you can just drag up and down and go to 12 segments is a 10 and 5 16 rise. That's too much. 17 is 7 and a quarter. That's probably dead on, but let's double check that 16, basically one less, you're always going to have one less run than you do rises, or generally, unless you have a tread at the very top. So if we go to 16, that's 13 and a quarter, which is too much because our treads, that'll have a gap in between our treads rather than a, tro uh, excuse me, a toe over. So we'll go to 17, 18 there, 11 and three quarters. So we're gonna have 18 uh, run and 17. Did I do that right? No, 19. Six and a half inch unit rise, which is a little off, but that's fine. It'll work for this. Then we come up here and delete everything except one of those guys. And now this line is exactly our unit run and this line is exactly our unit rise. So I'm gonna throw one of these guys at the bottom maybe, there it is. And then I don't need one at the top just yet. Uh, let's see, actually that's not true. I'm gonna put one at the top as well. This is what I mean. I don't do it in the absolute best way. There's probably a lot more efficient ways. Now, this first tread, the back of it is going to be uh, at the end of our run because we're assuming there's a piece of channel right here on a landing or whatever it's going up against. Um, and then we're done with that unit rise. So we can move it down here and then delete that one. Take our unit run. Put it there. We're basically just using those as, as little measuring tools. Um, and then the very, that's the very front of this next guy right there. Delete those two little measuring tools. Now that line should line up directly. Uh, sometimes it doesn't draw a line. If it doesn't draw a line between two points, which it should when you drag a tape measure like that, um, you draw a line between them, double click it with a tape measure, bam, and then delete the line. And look at that, it lines right up at the top of our uh, bottom tread, more or less, or yeah, bottom riser, I mean. So we select this guy, and now we can do a uh, copy multiple move or whatever. Um, so if you click, you know, 
copy move, which for Mac is option. It's probably alt for computer and, and go from, you know, one hypotenuse basically over. And then we're going to click times 15, nope, times 16. Bam. That's where every single tread and tread bracket go. Uh, and for some reason I'm off by a quarter inch. I have no idea how that's possible. Don't worry about it. <laughs> for now, we're not even gonna consider why that just happened. So now um, this toe line, we could, a lot, of, a lot of people run the top of their channel right there. Uh, that's a very standard way of doing everything. If you've got a lot of flat uh, construction going on, if you're building landings and catwalks, um, it might be a good idea to do that uh, unless some code requires that uh, to be two inches up. Hopefully it focuses. There it goes. Um, so like Coke bottles don't roll off and stuff like that. Uh, they have to have a little lip on the bottom. That's, that's an OSHA requirement uh, code. And then I think multifamily, um, it just needs to be like less than an inch and a half or less than two inches of a gap now. It's not a four inch rule when you get to the top uh, flat stuff. My point is you can go to the back of this bracket to nine and five eighths. Um, if you had a theoretical nine and five eighths piece of channel or, or flat bar, if you were to use like, you know, trendy stuff. So if we go 10 inches, that gives us a little bit of clearance on the back of those guys. A lot, another uh, thing shops do is they'll actually um, trim these uh, at a 45 or whatever to, to get them even more clearance. And then I come here and I go, bam, 12 inches. We just made, exactly two and five sixteenths of free rise by uh, placing these uh, treads lower inside the channel. Um, and that's big because that makes your hand railway that much less. That's almost three inches off every single picket times 45 or whatever. Uh, makes it that much easier for your guys to um, handle the large handrail panels and bring them up etc etc and it adds no weight to the overall value of this um, it just makes the whole system a little bit lighter so we keep all that stuff up there um, that now tells us where uh, where everything else needs to go uh, most common the channel just ends right here um, when you're gonna start cutting that uh, and then you just you have to uh, account for the flat bar though so we're gonna be using quarter inch flat bar, so we actually will just take away that, as well as take away a quarter inch down here. That's the edge of our channel, 12 inch channel that we can print out and cut. This one um, also 0.25, and then at the top, 0.25. Um, yeah, so I think that should be it. I think we're ready to draw our channel now. Come down over here. Again, there's gonna be a piece of flat bar that fills that in. So your tread technically hangs past the edge of the channel until you, which the first thing you should do is weld that on to keep everything nice and square and flat. And then come down here and we're just using the line tool. Draw these little lines. Yeah, there we go. Intersection, intersection. Intersection, bam, it filled it all in gray because SketchUp's dumb and it does that. So now is the only time I'm actually gonna twist this around and it, it's all wonky. I don't know why it does that. See, I, I don't know what just happened there. But if you just make that go straight up and down, you should be able to uh, select all of the treads and then come down here and deselect these lines there, there, and there. Um, and then you delete guides. And then inverse uh, your selection by doing, uh, holding shift and then selecting with the right hand tool group. So now, now you can move it if for whatever reason, right? If you don't know all of the basics, uh, definitely watch a YouTube video on the basics of SketchUp before you try and do all this. Now, bam, there's our profile view of exactly what we need to cut. Uh, it's really easy to just lay this on top of a uh, piece of channel, mark these, 
um, mark where every single tread goes and then mark these lines. I use my Milwaukee metal saw, cut, cut, uh, top and bottom, add some flat bar and then weld on your brackets. And there's that. Uh, you can group the whole thing together and then we're gonna rotate it so it's flat. So now it says on red axis. Oops. flip this wrong way. Those are kind of a guess for me. No, I was right the first time. So green, yeah, that's right. And then make it flat again. Now they're opposites. Close that, that's annoying. And with 12 inch channel, um, I find it to work just fine to uh, give them about uh, half an inch on the inside. And you end up losing one of these lines. You know, you print from about here to there, but you still get all the real information you need. And it's actually a little bit closer than that. Um, you know, you get plenty of, plenty of area printed there. And then that's it. And then I'll make a video on handrails next.